Male privilege is a concept within sociology for examining social, economic, and political advantages or rights that are available to men solely on the basis of their sex. A man's access to these benefits may vary depending on how closely they match their society's ideal masculine norm. Feminist scholarship in the area of women's studies during the 1970s produced the earliest academic studies of privilege. These studies began by examining barriers to equity between the sexes. In later decades, researchers began to focus on the intersectionality and overlapping nature of privileges relating to sex, race, social class, sexual orientation, and other forms of social classification. Overview Special privileges and status are granted to males in patriarchal societies. These are societies defined by male supremacy, in which males hold primary power and predominate in roles of political leadership, moral authority, social privilege and control of property. With systemic subordination of women, males gain economic, political, social, educational, and practical advantages that are more or less unavailable to women. The long-standing and unquestioned nature of such patriarchal systems, reinforced over generations, tends to make privilege invisible to holders. It can lead males who benefit from such privilege to ascribe their special status to their own individual merits and achievements, rather than to unearned advantages. In the field of sociology, male privilege is seen as embedded in the structure of social institutions, as when men are often assigned authority over women in the workforce, and benefit from women's traditional caretaking role. Privileges can be classified as either positive or negative, depending on how they affect the rest of society. Women's studies scholar Peggy McIntosh writes, We might at least start by distinguishing between positive advantages that we can work to spread, to the point where they are not advantages at all but simply part of the normal civic and social fabric, and negative types of advantage that unless rejected will always reinforce our present hierarchies. Positive advantages include having such things as adequate nutrition, shelter, and health care, whereas negative advantages accompanying male privilege include such things as the expectation that a man will have a better chance than a comparably qualified woman of being hired for a job, as well as being paid more than a woman for the same job. Topic. Scope Privilege is not shared equally by all males. Those who most closely match the ideal masculine norm benefit the most from privilege. In patriarchal societies this ideal, which is pervasive but unattainable for most men, has been described as being white, heterosexual, stoic, wealthy, strong, tough, competitive, and autonomous. Men's studies scholars refer to this ideal masculine norm as hegemonic masculinity. While essentially all males benefit from privilege to some degree, those who visibly differ from the norm may not benefit fully in certain situations, especially in the company of other men that more closely match it. Men who have experienced bullying and domestic violence in youth, in particular, may not accept that they are beneficiaries of privilege. Such forms of coercive violence are linked to the idea of toxic masculinity, a specific model of manhood that creates hierarchies of dominance in which some are favored and others are harmed. The invisibility of male privilege can be seen for instance in discussions of the gender pay gap in the United States. The gap is usually referred to by stating women's earnings as a percentage of men's. However, using women's pay as the baseline highlights the dividend that males receive as greater earnings 32% in 2005. In commerce, male dominance in the ownership and control of financial capital and other forms of wealth has produced disproportionate male influence over the working classes and the hiring and firing of employees. In addition, a disproportionate burden is placed upon women in employment when they are expected to be solely responsible for child care, they may be more likely to be fired or be denied advancement in their profession, thus putting them at an economic disadvantage relative to men, biologically. Male. Privilege is only one of the many power structures that may exist within a given society. The term, male privilege, does not apply to a solitary occurrence of the use of power, but rather describes one of many systemic power structures that are interdependent and interlinked throughout societies and cultures, as discussed by Paula Rothernberg in her novel Invisible Privilege, a memoir about race, class, and gender. Male privilege often takes institutionalized and embedded forms from which men may directly benefit. 
These instances of male privilege systems may attribute to male over empowerment and can help explain man's sense of centrality in some of the most powerful institutions. An example of male privilege in institutionalized academic settings can be observed by the prevalence of men in how curriculums are formed and history and literature is taught across the United States. Historically, all those who have held the title of President of the United States have been male. American government on the national level, including the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives, is also predominantly male. Topic: <laughs> Scholarship. The earliest academic studies of privilege appeared with feminist scholars' work in the area of women's studies during the 1970s. Such scholarship began by examining barriers to equity between the sexes. In later decades, researchers began to focus on the intersectionality and overlapping nature of privileges relating to sex, race, social class, sexual orientation, and other forms of social classification. Peggy McIntosh, one of the first feminist scholars to examine male privilege, wrote about both male privilege and white privilege, using the metaphor of the invisible knapsack to describe a set of advantages born, often unaware and unacknowledged, by members of privileged groups. According to McIntosh, privilege is not a result of a concerted effort to oppress those of the opposite gender, however, the inherent benefits that men gain from the systemic bias put women at an innate disadvantage. The benefits of this unspoken privilege may be described as special provisions, tools, relationships, or various other opportunities. According to McIntosh, this privilege may actually negatively affect men's development as human beings, and few question that the existing structure of advantages may be challenged or changed. Efforts to examine the role of privilege in students' lives has become a regular feature of university education in North America. By drawing attention to the presence of privilege including male, white, and other forms in the lives of students, educators have sought to foster insights that can help students contribute to social justice. Such efforts include Macintosh's invisible knapsack model of privilege and the male privilege checklist. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Gender neutrality in English. Some linguistic conventions have privileged men and the male perspective and suggested that maleness is the societal norm. In English, nouns such as man or mankind and forms of address like, you guys, are routinely used for women while it is not accepted to refer to men as women. Associating a man with something feminine and calling him girl or sissy is usually considered an insult. Expressions like, freshman, or occupational titles such as, chairman, are supposed to apply to both sexes and many prestigious occupations are implicitly associated with men so that people use modifiers such as, woman doctor, or lady doctor, to signal deviations from the norm that doctors are usually men. In Western culture, male images and exclusively male language for deities such as referring to God as he or father have been argued to have reinforced male privilege. Men's greater resemblance to God has been used to justify men's religious and cultural position. Historically, the third person singular pronoun he is used as a sex indefinite, generic form for all people e.g. Anyone can do it if he tries. Whereas the use of she to refer to people in general is not allowed. Masculine generics were first introduced by prescriptive grammarians in the 19th century who argued that he was the only correct sex indefinite referent. Prior to that, singular they and he or she had been widely used in written and spoken English. In 1850 a special act of parliament was passed in the United Kingdom that legally proscribed singular they and he or she in favor of he especially to shorten the language used in acts of parliament. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Criticism. Many men may respond to discussions of male privilege by saying that they do not feel that they have been given any unearned advantages, such as in their struggles to find success in employment, education, or relationships. Advocates for men's rights and father's rights as well as anti-feminist men often accept that men's traditional roles are damaging to men but deny that men as a group have institutional power and privilege, and argue that men are now victims relative to women. On the other hand, some self-identified feminist men take active roles in challenging oppressive sexism, arguing that male privilege is deeply linked to the oppression of women. 
They describe men's oppressive behaviors as cultural traits learned within patriarchal social systems, rather than inborn biological traits. Advocates within the broader men's movement oriented towards pro-feminism or anti-sexism argue that traditional gender roles harm both men and women. Liberal pro-feminism tends to stress the ways men suffer from these traditional roles, while more radical pro-feminism tends to emphasize male privilege and sexual inequality. Some men may be also be advocates of women's rights but fail to realize that their privilege as a whole, is a part of the issue at hand. Topic son preference In both India and China, male offspring are privileged and favored over female children. Some manifestations of son preference and the devaluation of women are eliminating unwanted daughters through neglect, maltreatment, abandonment, as well as female infanticide and feticide despite laws that prohibit infanticide and sex-selective pregnancy termination. In India some of these practices have contributed to skewed sex ratios in favor of male children at birth and in the first five years. Other examples of privileging male offspring are special praying for a son ceremonies during pregnancy, more ceremony and festivities following the birth of a boy, listing and introducing sons before daughters, and common felicitations that associate good fortune and well-being with the number of sons. Reasons given for preferring sons to daughters include sons' role in religious family rites, which daughters are not permitted to perform, and the belief that sons are permanent members of the birth family whereas daughters belong to their husband's family after marriage in accordance with patrilocal tradition. Other reasons include patrilineal customs whereby only sons can carry on the family name, the obligation to pay dowry to a daughter's husband or his family, and the expectation that sons will support their birth parents financially while it is regarded as undesirable or shameful to receive financial support from daughters. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Branscombe, Nyla R. June 1998. Thinking about one's gender group's privileges or disadvantages, consequences for well-being in women and men PDF. British Journal of Social Psychology. 37 to 167-184. doi 10.1111/j.2044-8309.1998.tb01163 x. Ferber, Marianne A., Blau, Francine D., Winkler, Anne E. 2014. The Economics of Women, Men, and Work, 7th ed. Boston, Pearson. ISBN 9780132992242. Ferber, Marianne A. Blau, Francine D. Winkler, N. E. 2014. Do Gay Men Have a Stake in Male Privilege? In Gluckman, Amy, Reed, Betsy. Homo Economics, Capitalism, Community, and Lesbian and Gay Life. New York, Routledge pp. 165-184. ISBN 9780415913978. Kimmel, Michael S. Men's Responses to Feminism, to Feminism at the Turn of the Century. Gender and Society. Sage, 1, 3, 261 and N-283. Doi 10.1177/0891243870010030003. JSTOR 189564. Kolb, Kenneth H. 2007. Supporting Our Black Men: Reproducing Male Privilege in a Black Student Political Organization. PDF. Sociological Spectrum. Mid-South Sociological Association MSSA, 27 257-274. 10.1080-027321707012061060. Kimmel, Michael, Ferber, Abby L., eds. 2003. Privilege, a Reader. Boulder, Colorado, Westview Press. ISBN 978-0-8133-4056-2. Messner, Michael A. June 1998. The Limits of the Male Sex Role, An Analysis of the Men's Liberation and Men's Rights Movement's Discourse, Gender and Society. Sage, 12, 3, 255 and N-276. Doi 10.1177/0891243298012003002 JSTOR 190285 PDF Noble, Carolyn, Pease, Bob 2011 Interrogating Male Privilege in the Human Services and Social Work Education 
Women in Welfare Education, 10 1, 29-38. Archived from the original on 23 August 2017, CS1 maint, bot, original URL status unknown, link, pdf. Aurelis, Pierre W. 2010. Unmasking Male, Heterosexual, and Racial Privileges, From Naive Complicity to Critical Awareness and Praxis. Counterpoints. Peter Lang, 351-17-62. JSTOR 42980551. Prato, Felicia, Stewart, Andrew L. March 2012. Group Dominance and the Half-Blindness of Privilege. Journal of Social Issues, Special Issue, Systems of Privilege, Intersections, Awareness, and Applications. 68 1, 28-45. j.10.1111, j.1540-4560.2011.01734, x. Schmidt, Michael T., Branscombe, Nyla R. 2002. The Meaning and Consequences of Perceived Discrimination in Disadvantaged and Privileged Groups PDF. European Review of Social Psychology. 12 1, 167-199. doi, 101080 14 quadrillion 792 trillion 